The Taliban takeover of Afghanistan has pitched the country into a spiraling humanitarian catastrophe. Acute malnutrition is now entrenched across the country. More than half the population of the country is living under poverty and people are relying heavily on aid services for even the most basic food commodities. Here's a report. At a time when this child should be playing with the children of his age, the little boy is selling balloons on the streets of Kabul to earn livelihood for his family. He is not alone. Today, hundreds of thousands of children work to survive in Afghanistan. Even before the withdrawal of international forces and the takeover by the Taliban in August of last year, the country was one of the world's most complex humanitarian emergencies. But now, one year later, the situation has deteriorated. Acute malnutrition is now entrenched across the country. For nearly a year, over 90% of households have not been able to get enough food. The World Food Programme estimates almost 20 million people, half their population, is suffering either level 3 crisis or level 4 emergency levels of food insecurity. At a time when the world is primarily focused on the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, India, the old weather friend of Afghanistan, is still concerned about the humanitarian situation going on in the country. Recently, India in Moscow stated, it is important that the world does not forget what is the situation in Afghanistan, as today it is not getting the attention that it deserves. It's important that the world not forget what is the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, because uh, today, uh, I think it's not getting the attention that it deserves. Uh, there is a humanitarian situation. And at least where India is concerned, we have stepped forward by providing food, providing medicines, providing vaccines. Uh, and uh, trying to find ways by which the Afghan people are supported in a very difficult phase uh, of their uh, history. Today, nearly all Afghans are dealing with humanitarian situations in the country. But women and girls suffer disproportionately because they have more difficulty getting food, medical care and financial resources. The all-male interim government has barred women from most paid jobs, which ultimately has had a devastating impact on households in which women were the sole earners. Repeated World Food Programme surveys indicate that nearly 100% of female-headed households don't have enough to eat and almost all are taking drastic measures to obtain food such as selling vital household items, sending children to work, or marrying off young girls for dowries. Even in areas in which women are still allowed to work in some jobs, primarily education and health care, they are often unable to comply with oppressive Taliban requirements, such as having a male family member escort them to work and even to remain there throughout the work day. Unsurprisingly, the Taliban have banned women from most paid jobs. Uh, of course, it's unsurprising because this is exactly what they did before. And it's completely uh, in tune with what they're doing right now, which is to take measures only when it does not get them international opprobrium and when the international community somehow distracted somewhere else. So in this case, for example, they're distracted with Ukraine and they believe quite rightly that they can get away with it. Uh, now, why are they doing this? We need to remember it's because it's a temporary job creation scheme in the sense they can't create jobs. So they're freeing up more jobs for men and of course the devastating consequences for single mother, single woman households or earning women households is uh, doesn't factor into their uh, uh, calculus. 
Uh, we should see more of this happen. The more the uh, Afghan economy goes uh, down, uh, the more such measures we should see. And realistically, what is there that we can do? Afghanistan is going through a very difficult time and the de facto rulers in the war-torn country are not willing to listen to what world leaders are demanding. Instead, they are playing the blame game. On one hand, they are violating human rights in the country, and on the other hand, the regime is holding the West responsible for all the challenges the country is facing at the moment. Taliban rulers are not ready to accept the fact that in the absence of conservative ideology, the situation in Afghanistan would have been in a much better situation. The Taliban group, whose leaders include several designated terrorists, seized control through force and is intent to impose its extreme ideologies on common Afghans. It is one thing to reverse the modest advancement in gender equality and education that have been accomplished over the previous 20 years. Yet, the regime wants international recognition as a legitimate government of Afghanistan and wants the world's assistance to tide over its difficulties, including its devastating earthquake. The Taliban group must realize that just as the world is rushing to help with humanitarian assistance for this natural disaster, it can hardly stand by and watch a Taliban-made disaster unfold.